No. Again. Don't pull away. Don't hit me anymore, please. Shh. Please. What? Now, what? I'm gonna put you in the trunk. What? No! You, no! Put, please, you to me! And if somebody sees me with you, they'll know I did it, you see. I don't want to die. Oh, it's okay. All right. I know. I won't tell anybody. I promise, I promise you, I swear I won't tell anybody. Please, just don't hurt me anymore. It's okay. It's really okay. Get away from me. Get over there. Getting too crowded and expensive. The property next to us went for thirty thousand dollars. You know that corner lot? That's so. We started building. Bulldozers came out at 7 this morning and started chomping down all those hemlock and spruce that stood outside my bedroom window God knows how many years. <laughs> they were like old friends. I'd like to get out. Well, where would you go? Someone would just tell me. Well, Northern Montana is still open territory. Ruth, can I help you? Oh, grab the coffee. Thanks, Beth. Uh, get the hot yeah. 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 uh, 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 Oh, thank you. What about Tony Bigelow? Chucked everything and took the Colorado Rockies. <laughs> I think that was Ann's idea, wasn't it? They just packed the children off to college and flew. I don't think I could do that. Neither do I. You sound rather satisfied. As a matter of fact, you know, I am. They opened a restaurant, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Near Aspen. It's small, though. Just six tables. <laughs> Doesn't bring in much, but they're content. I like that. That's nice. Well, wasn't that an idea of yours, Ruthie? And kind of a gourmet thing? Oh, that's when I was living in Tucson. Oh, I was still married to Tom. I've always wanted to own a bowling alley. What? <laughs> oh, Phil, you, you, you never you told us that. a terrible bowler. <laughs> you never even break a hundred. So what happened to the restaurant? Oh, I don't know. I was always afraid of making the wrong choice. <laughs> that's silly. And Ellie was still so little, you know, she needed me, especially then. Everybody have one? And we hadn't met until when? Well, Ellie was going on six. Oh, by the way, Tommy's coming in from Webster next week for mid-semester break. He wanted to know if Ellie would be down. <laughs> I don't know. How is she? Is she still living up in desert country? Mm-hmm. wonder if made a move way up there. Oh, she's at that age, you know. They want to be on their own, and when they get that way, there's not much you can do about it, is there? What's she doing? She's got a job in a record store. Well, that's only temporary. I'm sorry. Cream, sugar? Uh, anybody? No, I'm fine. Little cream. Get out of here! If you tell anybody, I'll kill you!
Is that you, Ellie? What are you doing? I thought you went back to your apartment. Andy, what is it? Is that Carl dropped you off? Oh, man. Oh, really, man. Type this for my signature. Uh, arrange for a messenger. Yes, certainly. Hello. Where have you been? I've been calling all weekend. I'm sorry. If you'd just give me a ring, you know, really, it isn't so much to ask. I try not to bother you. What is it? Mama! Ellie? Feel pain? Good. Look, Ellie, everything's gonna be fine. Won't be any time at all. We'll have you out of here. Besides her other injuries, several ribs are broken and there's a slight damage to the spleen. Oh, my God. Calling Dr. Arnold. Now, don't worry. I'll, I'll, look, I'll be looking in on her regularly. daughter, there's a lot of things I'd like to clear up. How did she meet Andy Webb? Oh, I don't know. Well, according to the courtesy report, he was her boyfriend. You didn't know that? No, that's, uh, that's news. It was a friend of his that raped her, Carl Bergson. Mrs. Randall, do you know if your daughter... Well, lots of kids now are into, you know, grass, Of course pieces. not. She's not like that. You're sure? Uh, it's 
First of all, I don't understand these questions. Ellie's not being investigated. No, and I don't mean it to come out like that. My problem is I'm running against time. I've got to find the facts, and one of the facts is Ellie left with this boy voluntarily. And that makes this tough. Well, that's insane. Just he beat the hell out of her. Everybody knows that. He almost keeps trying to kill her. I know. Well, then find him. If he hasn't already skipped. What? Talk to this Andy. I have. He swears he doesn't know a thing. How do you know he isn't lying? He is. That's what I'm up against. So you're going anyway, huh? No matter what I say. I told him at the office it'll only be a couple of days. But why? I just don't understand why. What do you think you can do up there? I don't know. Nobody else seems to be doing anything about it. I just have to go there. Well, I don't like you going on your own. You wait till Saturday. I'll come with you. There's an audit. I can't just take an audit. No! That animal's out there someplace. It's not gonna hurt Ellie again. I was looking for Andy Webb. He's in the back. You want to come in? Andy. Yeah. Somebody here to see you. Hey. It's hot in it. I was gonna clean up, but I thought I'd wait till evening until it cools down. Um, you want to sit down? Oh, what's my tea? Um, we've got. Uh, China black and chamomile. Oh, I'm Ellie's mother. If you're making tea, I'll have some. <laughs> some is here. I, I need your help. I wanted to find Carl Bergson. I don't know where he is. Sergeant Larson said he was your friend. Well, he comes around once in a while. He's not my friend. I can't keep him from coming around. <clears throat> was he here the day Ellie was raped? What happened that day? Why won't you tell me? What are you afraid of? He's a pretty sick guy. Can I have some ice? You and I were going together. We were not going together. We had some problems. Problems? Ellie's lying in a hospital bed right now. With her ribs have been broken. Her spleen's injured. It's awful. She's a child again. A terrified child. I don't know if she'll ever get over this. I want to get that man. I can't do it without your help. I'm sorry, I don't know where he is. Can you find out? No. I'm going to be staying in Ellie's apartment. What are you telling me for? Well, if you have any information... You're not I... going to get any information. How long is she going to be laid up? I don't know. I wasn't here that day. I mean, I dropped by later. But I know that Carl was here. And him and Ellie went off together. Yeah. And they stopped by a friend's, Cal Logan. So maybe he could tell you something. He runs a car shop behind the movie theater in town. 
The next time you see your daughter, tell her I was asking for her. My name's Carrie. I don't know where he's living. How is that possible? It's ran a lot. I don't ask. When they were here that day, can you tell me what happened? Nothing. Talked. Stayed about a half hour. Do you know where they went afterward? Yep. Are you sure? Are you protecting him? Because I don't want no trouble. I gotta live here. I gotta deal with him. I've had problems with him before. What kind of problems? What kind of problems? Man snaps. He's going along as calm as he can be and snaps. He's over at my house one day, and his mama came looking for him. She lives over the plain view. Well, I got into it about something, I don't know, money, something like that. They thing I know, he's punching her in the face with his fist. And I jump in there, and comes after me like a crazy man. He knocks me down, and I hit my shoulder, and crack it. He's in the hospital for two months. Now he comes by, I just give him a drink, and sit tight till he leaves. How often does he come around? Not much. He just got out of jail a little while ago. Jail what for? I don't know nothing about that. That's uh, over in Maricopa County. But you know where they went that night. Tell me. What good is that going to do anybody? Please. Carl said he was going to Andy's cabin. Said he's gonna have him some fun with Ellie. Did you come out here alone? better go on home. You know what he's gonna do to you if he finds out you're looking for him? It ain't gonna make no difference. You're gonna walk away again. You did before. What do you mean? A couple other rapes. At least that's what I heard. Some news about Carl. First, I gotta get you word. Jane, don't tell nobody where this came from. I won't tell. All right, look, I heard that he's starting a new job tomorrow. He's gonna be working at the lumber yard outside of town. Thank you.
What are you doing here? I told you. We'll handle it. Of course, he's on probation. Uh, no, uh, we, we can't revoke bail. That's not our province. But what we can do is place a hold on him for violation of probation. But we can't do it when he's in the Arroyo jail. We'll have to wait until he's transferred to county. When will that be? Oh, I'll check. Wasn't your department notified of his arrest? Yeah, it, was, it was too soon. Uh, sometimes it takes weeks. Yes, I, I know, but see, it, it's too costly to cross-check every single arrest. If we hadn't come here and told you about this, he could have been released. He still might. Yeah, uh, Sergeant Larson, please. Yeah, hello. Uh, this is Deputy Probation Officer Fisher. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Randall are in my office, and they just told me about their daughter. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now, do you th when will he be transferred to county jail? Okay, yeah, fine. And and, and thanks, yeah. Tonight. Can, you can put a hold on him then. Well, I won't be here. It has to be placed in person. Well, can't somebody else go? It's after 6 o'clock and everybody else is gone. See, no, nobody hangs around on the weekend. But he'll be bailed out. Can't you wait for him? I'd have to go down to the jail, sit around until he's brought in and his booking papers processed. It could take all night. If he gets out, he'll try to hurt my daughter. I, I don't know what to say. Good night, Mr. Fisher. Yeah, good, good night. Look, I, I, I'm sorry, but... I have a group of people waiting for me, and I, I can't keep them hanging. Come on, Rose. Well, thank you anyway. Come on, Ruth, I got your purse. mother visited him in jail. Larson thinks that she's going to bail him out. When? Tonight. Downstairs. Why? 
Well, I think it'd be safer if you sleep down near us. Oh, look what I found in your closet. Your graduation picture. I've been looking for it for the longest time. Good to see you smiling. You're not angry? Oh, for heaven's sakes, no. A little confused, maybe. I feel so far away from you. So many things I didn't know. Billy, why didn't you tell me about Andy? I knew you wouldn't like him. Where'd you meet him? He came into the shop one day. He seemed nice. He's not at all like you. You're not going back there again, are you? Mom, you have nothing in common with him. I don't even know what that means. But since you know me so much better than I do, maybe you can tell me. Ellie, don't have that attitude. Not now. But, Mom, you're doing it again. I'm trying to understand. Where did Carl come from? I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. I made a mistake. So did I. I was trying to help. You didn't know what you wanted. And I wasn't going to find it in this house, not with you all over me. I'm tired. Ellie, I love you very much. I love you too, Mom. Yes. Yes? Oh. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh. Yes, thank you. Good night. Who was it? The probation officer. He didn't go home. He, he waited and placed the hold. Prosecutor. How do you feel? Okay. Hmm. I know you've been through a lot. I wish I could say it was over, but I'll try to make it as easy as possible for you. Would you come with me? Oh, here we go. It's not far. It's just over there in my room. Unfortunately, with rape victims, the crime continues into the courtroom. I'm afraid you'll be forced to, in a sense, relive your experience. Tell what happened that day. And you're going to have to do it in front of the defendant himself. That's going to be the roughest part. Will there be other people there? Well, it's open to the public. Seems that they crawl out of the woodwork every time there's a rape case. Why, why does this have to be held in a royal? Only the preliminary hearing. If it goes to trial, the trial will take place here in the city, at the county courthouse. This, this is not a trial. Now, this is simply a way for a judge to decide whether there's enough evidence to warrant a trial. I, I certainly believe there is. A defense attorney is a fellow by the name of uh, Paul Underwood. He's going to ask you questions, trying to punch holes in your story, even perhaps exploit the humiliation you're feeling. 
terrible aspect of crimes like this. The victim feels shamed because she was forced to participate. And of course, that's where the guilt comes from. But Ellie, I want you to keep telling yourself over and over again, I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. Okay. This is the time and place set for the preliminary hearing of Carl Bergson, felony A 2762, alleging a violation on the 14th of June of section 210 of the Penal Code, a violation of 266C of the Penal Code, a violation of 270 and 271. Mr. Underwood, do you represent Mr. Bergson? Yes, Your Honor. We'll uh, we'll waive the reading of the complaint and statement of statutory rights. Mr. Carp, are you ready for the people? I am, Your Honor. Call your first witness. I'd like to call Andrew Webb. Mr. Webb, do you own a cabin? Uh-huh. Where is it located? It's right off Fireplace Road. Do you recognize this lantern? Yes. And this poker? Yes, sir. The shotgun, do you recognize it? That's my shotgun. Where was it kept? It's kept at the cabin. It hangs on the wall. Was it empty or loaded? It was loaded. No further questions. Mr. Underwood? How long had you known L.A. prior to the day in question? Oh, about a month. Was she your girlfriend? Uh-huh. Had you and she any problems that day? Um, well, we'd had a few words. A few words about what? She was angry because I was seeing somebody else. Somebody? Another girl. So she was angry, you say? Yep. <clears throat> now, after you and she had the words, she left the trailer with Mr. Bergson. Anybody force her to leave? No. You went voluntarily. Hmm? Well, he offered her a ride and she went. Tell me, uh, have you ever been up to your cabin with Miss Freud? Objection, Your Honor. That's immaterial. Sustained. Nothing further. 
Your excuse, Mr. Webb. Well, your next witness. I'd like to call Ellen Pruitt to the stand. Ellie. trailer sometime on the 14th of June? Yes. Who was there beside you? Andy and uh, Carl Bar Bergson. Carl Bergson? Uh, have you ever seen him before? <clears throat> no, it was the first time. How long did he stay? A few hours, maybe. He was very quiet. He seemed okay. Did you leave the trailer with anyone? Yes. Who? Carl. Where'd you go? He took me out into the desert. Did you go to the desert voluntarily? I wanted him to take me home, but he started speeding and talking crazy, and he said, I'm going to rape you. How did you get out of the automobile? He grabbed my arms over my head and he pulled me out. And then what did he do? And he raped me. Objection, Your Honor. Use of the word rape is a conclusion of the witness. Sustain. Ellie, can you describe to us what you mean when you use the word rape? He beat me. And he forced me to have sexual relations. Now, when you re-entered the automobile, did you go anywhere? Yes. He took me. Where did he take you? He took me to Andy's cabin. Ellie, I have a photograph here. Would you describe this to us? Those are burns in my legs. Where'd you get them? Carl burned me with a hot poker. He burned you with a hot poker? There was a lantern in the cabin and he heated the poker on the lantern and he burned me. Is this the lamp? Yes. And this poker? Yes. This shotgun? Oh. <laughs> Did you have an occasion to see this weapon at any time on the 14th of June? He is in the cabin. At that point, were you free to leave the cabin? No, I was tied up. How were you tied? Ellie. Come on, Ellie. <laughs> God. My hands. My <laughs> he tore up bed sheets. And he, he tied my hands to one post. He tied one leg to the other, and he tied the other to the other. And then what did he do? He beat me all over my body, and he attacked me again. Mr. Underwood, 
Go with it. What? <clears throat> when was the first time you met Carl Burks? That day, the 14th of June. Where was this? At Andy's trailer. Mm -hmm. What went on during that day? Just sat around. Doing what? Just talking. Just talking? Yes. Anybody drink any booze? Carl was. You have any? No. I just had some beer. How much? About one can, maybe. Mm -hmm. Was uh, anyone taking any drugs? <sighs> no. Now, uh, on the day in question, why did you leave the trailer with Carl Bergson? He offered me a ride home. Well, weren't you worried about accepting a ride with someone you hardly knew? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. <clears throat> Where did you and Carl go? He wanted to stop by Cal Logan's for a few minutes. Didn't you drive any place first? No! But after Mr. Logan's, you did go into the desert. Oh. Why, he took me out there! Did you try to stop him? Of course, I asked him to take me back. You asked him? <gasps> but I was shouting. I was very scared. All right, well now, when you got up to the cabin that evening, how did you get inside? The door was locked. I was forced to enter through the window. Well, did you go in through the window first, or did Carl go first? I don't remember. Well, you remember you were forced. Did he push you through or pull you through? I don't remember, but I was forced. How were you forced? I don't recall whether he had my arm twisted by my back or had a hold of my hair. It's not clear to me. I just don't recall. But you do remember that all this was against your will. <laughs> Objection, Your Honor. He's badgering the witness. <laughs> Sustain. Now, Mr. Underwood. <gasps> no further questions. <laughs> You may step down, Miss Pruitt. All right, Mr. Carp, call your next witness. He was accusing me of lying. everybody. It's kind of rough on you, Ellie. I'm sorry. How could he talk to her like that? Well, she did very well. The judge should have stopped him. Anybody interested in a ruling? He's ordered to stand trial on four counts. Arraignment in two weeks, probably a trial date sometime in October. We will get a conviction, won't we? Well, that's, uh, that's hard to tell. When you go to trial, there'll be a jury. And you never know which way they're going to turn. Sometimes the fine line between rape and consent. But the evidence. The way he hurt her, the... isn't that enough? Mrs. Randall, let me tell you about some of the problems. First, Ellie took that ride voluntarily. Secondly, I'm afraid some of the jurors are going to think she deserved it. Now, why was Ellie hanging out with, with this crowd? And finally, there were no witnesses. Well, uh, we'll get more evidence. The other rapes that we think he committed. Well, that would build a strong case. All right. But Larson went back to Andy. He talked to him, talked to his friends. They wouldn't say anything. 
What if you called him in and reasoned with him? I'm not able to do that. Why? You... I've been taken off the case. You... They're transferring me to the trial division downtown. I just heard about it yesterday. Well... Now... Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Oh, you can't get off this case. This was... We just started. Yeah. Ellie, Ellie, Ellie shares her feelings. She, she trusts you. I'd like to see this through. I really would. But okay. unfortunately, that's not the way things work. You are terribly understaffed. Oh, yeah, would... And usually, these cases never get to trial. Particularly rapes. This one will. I'll see you I don't want you to worry. There'll be another deputy assigned to you. He'll oh, take care of everything. Where? I don't know. I... What is it? He's off the case. Thank you. Only we could find the other victims. Ruth, listen to me. He's been indicted. It's moving. Just let the police handle it. Clark's gone. It's two weeks. And they haven't assigned anybody. There's nobody on the case. Let's just forget this for a few days. Go up to Leighton Minton or Ruthie, I'm worried about She didn't sleep again last night. Had to keep the light on. He gave her no choice. It's as if he took her over, as if she had no right to her own body. She's all we have. She... Can't let him get away with this. You mentioned other rape victims. Hey, look, I already told Larson. And I don't know anything else. All right, Labor, this is all you're gonna get. The names of the girls, and that's it. Talk to you for a minute? Sure. Come on in. Oh, thank you. Here, let me get this. All right. Oh. My goodness, are these all yours? Oh, Lord, no. <laughs> no, this one's mine. Oh, for me? These two are my neighbors, and this one's my sister's. Thank Just you. mining them. They're beautiful. Thanks. So, uh, what is it you wanted to see me about? Carl Bergson. Heidi, honey. Um, why don't we all go inside and make some more lemonade, all right? All right. Good idea, huh? Come on. Let's go in. I want you to keep the kitchen clean, though, and close that back door behind you. Go on. What about him? He raped my daughter. Rotten luck. You can help us. Yeah? How? Carl's going to trial. We can get a conviction. We just need you to testify. Hey, look, lady, I, I'm married now. You know what I mean? I mean, my husband don't know nothing about that, and uh, I really need to keep it that way. It'd be hard to get a conviction without your, without your help. Look at it. I'm sorry. I'm not going to risk my marriage. How would that risk your marriage? Look, my husband's all right. I mean, he's not a bad guy or nothing, but, uh, he just wouldn't understand. Well, it wasn't your fault. Yeah, well, that don't matter. I just, I just don't think he could live with it. I mean, uh, he's too proud. Why didn't you report it at the time? 
Jackson, maybe you wouldn't have happened to my daughter. Look, it was useless. I mean, it happened in my apartment. I had people over. I knew all those people. Except for Carl, whom I had never seen before. But, I mean, everybody's at the house. It's a party, you know? They're drinking. I gotta get up early and go to work the next morning. So, so I go to bed. The next thing I know is he's on top of me, choking me, and threatening to kill me if I scream. So now you tell me, how am I supposed to go to the police? Because you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, I asked for it. You knew there was another uh, rape. Yeah. I know. How are we going to stop that man? How are we ever going to stop that man? Shoot him. It's the only way I know. I'm looking for Kathy Burroughs. Oh, that's my daughter. Uh, well, what did you want? You mean there were other boys? There were four of them. Carl was their leader. I don't understand. He was some sort of hero or something. Because he'd been in jail before. I don't know. But he told the others what to do when they did it. Can you tell me... What happened? No. I just want to forget it. You went to the police. Yeah. I went to them. What happened? They told me to forget it. it said it'd be my word against theirs. They didn't try to find them? Police knew who they were. I told them. You, you knew the boys. I went to school with them. They all live around here, except Carl. I see him every day. Will you go to the police with me? No. Why? Don't you want to get him? What's the use? The trial's in three weeks. We can get a conviction. Kathy. My little girl's testimony alone might not convince them, but a second victim's story... I'm sorry. I just don't want to do it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you, honey. I just wanted to put this over you. I don't need it. It's chilly out tonight. Mom. Mom. What? Were you up there again? Yes. Why are you doing this? For you. I just want it to be over. It will be. Did you talk to the other? I, I spoke with the other victims. They don't want to testify. 
Because I could just see the district attorney. I'm sorry. He's in just, a meeting just right for a now. Minute. And later he has an appointment with the mayor. Would you like to leave your name and address? Is that Mr. Edison? Mr. Edison? Okay. Mr. Edison? Yes. Oh, and your I'm appointment with the mayor? I'm Mrs. Randall. Could I speak to you for a moment? Yes, but I'm running late. You'll have to walk with me. Oh, I don't understand. Why hasn't anyone been assigned yet? Let me try to explain something. Each of my deputies is carrying a workload right now of over 50 cases. I've got a man in my office trying to investigate a child murderer that nobody else has any time for. I've got half a dozen lawyers waiting to see me. I've got 150 cases ready to go to trial today alone. I've got cases for which I've got no prosecutor, and that's what I'm up against. But our trial comes up in two weeks. Please, Mrs. Randall, try not to worry. Someone will be assigned. You know, I found two other rape victims, but they don't want to testify. If, if one of your men talked to them... Will you send that information to my office? I did. I sent a letter three weeks ago. Didn't you read it? <sighs> I'm sorry. I'll try to get somebody on it tomorrow. Ruthie? Yeah? DA's office on the phone. They want to speak to Ellie. You want to take it? Maybe they've assigned a new DA. Hello? Is this Ellen Pruitt? Um, no, I'm sorry. This is her mother. May I help you? Yes, this is the district attorney's office calling. We wanted to let Miss Pruitt know the defense will be coming in tomorrow to request a continuance on the trial date. Tell your daughter she'll be notified by subpoena through the mail of the new date. But the trial's only a week away. Why do they ask for a, a delay now? I'm sorry. I'm only the witness coordinator. You'll have to talk to your trial deputy. We don't have one. It was Deputy District Attorney Lewis that asked me to contact you. Maybe you should talk to him. <sighs> Thank you. Attorney, a chance to talk to you. They've already called the case. Versus Carl Bergson. Your Honor, may I address the court? If it please the court, Your Honor, I'm requesting that the court appoint a psychiatrist to examine my client, pursuant to Code Sections uh, 731, 10, 22. Additionally, I would ask the court to order the psychiatrist to conduct an alcohol-induced electroencephalogram. On what basis, Mr. Underwood? On the basis, Your Honor, that this defendant has a long history of psychiatric episodes and has on occasions during the past several years exhibited what might be schizophrenic tendencies all negative personality features appearing after an episode of heavy drinking. Motion granted. It is the court's experience that in order to get the results back from the examination and give you sufficient time to prepare for trial, you'll need at least 60 days. I'll set uh, November 6th for the hearing of any motions either side may wish to make. Uh, trial date is set for December 6th. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Lewis? Yes? I'm Ruth Randall. This is my daughter, Ellie. This is my husband, Frank. You're the deputy handling our case? Yes. What do they want with a psychiatric examination? Call uh, oh, number 16. They'll try to Gallagher. show a case of uh, diminished capacity. Well, what's that mean? Oh, they'll try to prove that he's not responsible for his actions under alcohol. Listen, I don't have time to speak to you right now. I'm doing another court. Why don't you call my office next week and uh, we'll discuss it. Uh, People versus Carl Bergson, both sides present. What's your pleasure, counsel? Your Honor, we'll have to ask for a continuance. Three trial motions and trial. I just got the report from the psychiatrist yesterday. Very well. With a time waiver from your client, I'll continue this case to December 20th for motions and carry the trial over to January 4th. Next case. I can't believe it. I don't believe this is happening.
Excuse me. I'm Chester Gates, Deputy District Attorney. Oh. I was told you'd be here. Yeah. I've been assigned your case. Oh, we have well, a trial. Yeah, Mr. Lewis. Well, I'm afraid he's caught up in another trial. Well, the, are you familiar well, with the case? I, he, that's absurd. Well, um, I've gone over your file. You've gone over our file? Well, may I ask when you were assigned? Last night. Last, Last night. night? Why didn't you call us? Ma'am? Don't you think it's important to talk to us? Ask us for information? Yeah, well, I, um... Well, what? Mr. Mr. Gates? Uh, will you excuse me for a moment? Yes. I'm afraid your case will have to be continued until tomorrow. Why? Why? There's a van that brings the prisoners over from the county jail every day. They forgot Carl Bergson. He was left behind. Oh, for God's sake. Mr. Underwood, it would appear that your client didn't make it here again today. Yes, Your Honor. I've just been informed that uh, the reason Mr. Bergson didn't show up yesterday or again today is that he's ill. And he's been confined to the hospital section of the jail. Mm. We'll need a brief continuance. Madam Clerk, what's the next available date? February 14th. Oh, that's two months. Your Honor, can't we have an earlier date? Madam Clerk? It's the holidays, Your Honor. Everything has been continued until after Christmas. We have nothing else available until February 14th. Well, February 14th it is. Case continued on motion of the defense. Asleep. Mm -hmm. Did I tell you Alma called? Invited us to dinner Christmas night. That'd make a nice change, huh? We haven't seen them for a long time. What's the matter? They gave us another new attorney today. Another one? Well, what happened to Gates? They just assigned him. I know. Anyway. Alex and Beth will be there, so we can have a real... so things would write themselves. I don't think that anymore. Ruth, my darling, you have done everything you can. We know this is going to drag on. We know that. You've got to get it out of your mind. I think you should go back to work. I can't. Ruth, listen to me. The crime has been done. It's been done. At least suffered. I don't want her to keep on suffering. I want to bring some order back to this Order? House. There's no order in this case. It's out of control. He's going to get off. We don't know and that. And if he does, what do we do then? We move. We, we get out of here. Move! Who took these photographs? I did. Why are you showing them to me? You haven't seen Ellie, Mr. Brown. I wanted you to see what she looked like. You know, of course, that I have access to police photos. 
I know. I just wanted to be sure. Well, didn't you think that I would look at them? I don't know anymore. This letter, the one about the other victims, when did you send it? Five months ago, and nothing's been done yet. I can't believe it isn't important to get at least one of those girls to testify. Of course it would be important. <laughs> Why doesn't somebody do something about it? Look, and I don't think... I don't think you get both of them to testify, but... I think if we really go after that Burroughs girl, she can be convinced. Look, Mrs. Randall, why don't you sit down and make yourself comfortable, okay? Judy, would you check a letter to the DA? It's dated, um... August 15th. Thank you. August 15th, it's from a Ruth Randall. Now, about these continuances. Some of them were for very questionable reasons. One time the defendant was ill, but I never saw a medical report. Well, there's no reason why he would. I'm telling you, Mr. Barron, there are to be no more continuances. Tell me something. Why do you take your daughter to every hearing when you know there's going to be a continuance? Aren't you afraid of keeping this alive in her? Wouldn't it be better for your daughter just to try to forget this whole thing? Forget? How could she forget? From now on, every time she meets a man, she'll have that distrust, that fear, anger. Her life's been changed, and he did it. That's why I take her with me, because I'm afraid you'll forget. And isn't that what's happening? Huh? Slowly, as the months pass, the courts, the judge, your office, I just pushing it further into the background until finally it'll just become some file in some courthouse vault. In this state, the accused has a right to a trial in 60 days. What about the victim? What's the progress on that letter, Judy? I found it. Where is it? Stuck away in some file. Like I told you before, I can't help you. Kathy, you're the only one who can help. Unless you testify, there's a good chance you'll get off. Oh, great. That makes me feel real good. What do you expect me to do after you tell me something like that? You'd only have to testify once. That's, that's all. Just one time. I'm not getting up in no courtroom so they can tell me I'm lying. You were willing to do it once. Then it just happened. It was different then. And now it's happened to my daughter. Sorry, I'm Frank. Oh, that's all right. I got tied up the office. Oh. Sorry. Afraid about Kathy? Her testimony should really help us. Huh? Uh, I haven't told Underwood about Kathy yet. Thank you. I'll, I'll just have some coffee, okay? Thanks. Why not? I don't think we should go to trial. I'll go to trial? What? I feel we should try to plea bargain. Absolutely not. Look, we don't gain that much by going to trial. As a matter of fact, we have a lot to lose. Our case isn't that strong. How can you say that? He almost killed her. Well, what about Kathy's testimony? Yeah, you yourself told me how important that was. Yes. And I also told you that we would take care of it by ourselves. But by the time we got there, you'd already talked to her. Well, what's the difference? I got her to testify, didn't I? I mean, isn't that what's important? Oh, yes. But now I'm afraid it presents a problem. Underwood will know that you've already talked to Kathy. And once he gets her on the stand, he can say to her, by the way, did Mrs. Randall visit you, interview you? 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mrs. Randall who told this girl what to say. I did not. Well, try to make a jury believe that. There's something else. Kathy's testimony might not be admissible. And all my pleading with her was useless. Well, not necessarily. Underwood knows that he'll have a hard time explaining away Ellie's injuries. So, if we put pressure on him now, the man is going to bargain. I don't understand. I don't either. I... Thanks. Okay. I don't okay. Understand okay. That. Just settle down. I'll explain it to you. Here's, here's how it goes. We bargain. We trade off a few things, and then Carl pleads guilty. Okay. Then he has to go in front of the judge to be sentenced. Now, since this isn't a trial and there is no jury, the law allows us to put Kathy on the stand to show that he has led a life of crime and should be slapped with a higher sentence. Now, if we go to trial, mm -hmm. what's the most he could get? Fifteen years. But that's only if he's convicted on all four counts. And if we plea bargain? Well, I don't know. I have to wait to see what Underwood wants to do. What's wrong? I want the maximum. Everything. I want him put away for as long as possible. But Ruth... He there's... ruined my daughter's life. Are you willing to risk acquittal by going to trial? Is that possible? Oh, yes. Yeah, I've seen it happen before. And what about Ellie? Do you want to put her back on the stand again? This time in front of a jury. Their eyes on her, visualizing this rape that she has to describe. Do you want her to go through all of this again? Do you think she can handle it? So, I'll send the briefs over the first part of the train. I appreciate it. Thanks. We went in with four counts. Rape, kidnapping, infliction of great bodily injury and assault with a deadly weapon. He will plead to everything except kidnapping and assault. How many years can he get? Maximum five years for rape and four for bodily injury. It's a total of nine years. What's the minimum? Five years. Five years? That's damn good for rape case. He can be paroled in three years. Good behavior, that's true. No. That's out of the question. I will not agree. I will Randall, not agree. Listen, listen to me, Mrs. Randall. Listen to me. There were 13,000 rape trials in this country last year and approximately 500 drew actual prison terms. 500. That's the kind of justice that we are up against. Now, if you get six men on that jury, you can bet that at least half of them are going to believe that she asked for it. That's right, asked for it. Either up front or somewhere in the corner of their minds. How can you be sure the judge will give him nine years? Well... It just so happens that Judge Connors is one of those old hardliners. He's a strong family man. He adores his wife. And he happens to have a teenage daughter. Okay. We can try something. It's seldom done. It's called enhancement. Once we go into that hearing, we can get an additional two years if we can show aggravated assault with the use of the shotgun. It's just one of those technicalities. The DA at the prelim didn't get it in the record straight, which means that he didn't prove that the gun was used to facilitate the rape. It's very important. If you want to have the extra two years, you have to have that right in the records. Which means... Ellie is going to have to testify. Told me I wouldn't have to testify. But only to the use of the gun, honey. That's all. He said it was over. But Ellie, I'll have you off that stand in two minutes. You won't be facing a jury. I can't do it. Ellie, I'm afraid if you don't testify, Kathy won't either. We can add two years to his sentence. Don't you see how important that is to us? Why is it so important if it's only two years? We have to put him away for as long as we can. Mom! I was the one who was raped! Okay. 
Okay. I was dragged out of the car. By whom? Paul, George, Gary Hankin. They were holding me. And then what happened? He got out of the car. Carl Bergson. And what happened after that? He grabbed me and threw me on the ground. He told the others to hold me so they pinned my arms and legs down. And was there an act of sexual relations at that time? Not right away. Not yet. First he started slapping me in the face. Easy, not hard. He kept slapping me and, and laughing. And what did you do? I was screaming. I was very scared. I didn't know what he was going to do. I pleaded with him to stop, but he wouldn't. He just laughed and said, I'm going to rape you. Then he told the others to let me go. And he started chasing me, like in circles around this big open field and punching me. I kept falling. And then one time I just didn't get up. Why not? I figured he was going to kill me anyway. And what happened after that? He raped me. What did the other boys do? They watched. I see. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Underwood, do you have any questions? One or two, Your Honor. Uh, Kathy, did you report this alleged rape to the authorities? Yes. Were they prosecuted? No. Well, why was that? The police said it'd be my word against theirs. Their word against yours. All right, thank you, Kathy. I have nothing further, Your Honor. You may step down, Miss Burroughs. I wonder if you'd consider taking my expert witness out of order, Your Honor. He has another appearance later this afternoon. Very well, Mr. Underwood. Dr. Carlson, take the stand, please. Now then, Doctor, how did you examine Mr. Bergson? Well, I did an electroencephalographic examination. It showed uh, abnormalities in the two frontal lobes of the brain, which tend to impair his judgment particularly when he's under the influence of alcohol. In other words, you discovered brain damage. Now, was this uh, particularly recent in Mr. Bergson? Possibly related to an injury he sustained at age 20. Mm -hmm. Now, doctor, uh, what would be your recommendations considering Mr. Bergson's diagnosis? Well, I would suggest uh, abstention from alcohol entirely. And some psychotherapy would be a benefit. Mm. Thank you, Doctor. Nothing further. 
Your witness, Mr. Barron. Thank you. Doctor, you mentioned an injury at the age of 20. What injury was that? Oh, he sustained a, a gunshot wound in the abdomen. And during surgery was probably the time that uh, brain damage would have occurred. Brain damage caused by surgery of the abdomen? Oh, yes. Probably loss of blood, hemorrhage. Ah. Doctor, do you feel there is any likelihood of a cure for this individual? Not cure in the sense of curing the basic pathology, no. The person, uh, the cure, or so-called, uh, the question was cure. Cure, right. No, no. Uh, there is the uh, treatment I recommended, uh, but uh, not cure. So that as long as we relied on the defendant to refrain from alcohol and seek psychotherapeutic help, his impaired sense of judgment would be limited. Is that correct? Yes, the inability would be lessened. Oh, that's a double negative, isn't it? <laughs> uh, you recommend that he undertake a program of Alcoholics Anonymous and outpatient therapy with an injunction against the use of alcohol. Yes, yes. And that would ensure him from doing this again? Well, uh, no. Doctor, I just have one more question. How long did you examine the defendant? Mm, about an hour. One hour. Thank you, doctor. No more questions. You may step down, Dr. Carlson. Thank you. Your Honor, I just have one more witness to call. Very well, Mr. Barron, call your witness. I call Ellen Pruitt. Your right hand, please. Are you all right? Miss Pruitt, are you all right? Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give in the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Louder, please. I do. Please be seated and state your full name for the record. Ellen Pruitt. Pruitt, directing your attention to June 14, were you present in a cabin on Fireplace Road with the defendant? Yes. While you were tied up, did Mr. Bergson have a shotgun in his possession? What was he doing with the shotgun? He... Yes? He pointed it at me. What part of you was the shotgun being pointed at? Object to the questions in producing facts, not in evidence. Overruled. You may answer the question, Miss Pruitt. At my face. How long was the gun pointed at you? Five or ten minutes. Yes. And during this five or ten minute period, 
Did Mr. Bergson say anything to you? Yes. Miss Pruitt? I just don't recall what was said. Are you having trouble remembering the details of what happened? Yes. Miss Pruitt! During the period that Mr. Bergson had that gun, did he at any time not point the gun at you? I was trying to avoid his eyes, so... I wasn't really watching. I, I don't know. Well, periodically, did you perhaps glance up at him? Once or twice, maybe. And where, on the shotgun, were his hands? I was scared under my wits. I wasn't really watching how I was holding it, you know? Thank you. Uh, I have no more questions, Your Honor. Your witness, Mr. Underwood. What? How did you get into the cabinet? I object to the relevancy of that area of questioning, Your Honor. Overruled. How did you get into the cabin that night? Well, I answered this the last time. Well, please answer now. I was forced to go through the window. Well, you and Mr. Bergson both crawled through a window, didn't you? Yes. Well, how did he force you? He beat me. Did he go in first? No, I don't think so. Then you went through first. Yes. Well, how did you get through that window? I object. Sustained. Mr. Underwood, would you please confine yourself to the issue of the shotgun? All right, now, Miss Pruitt, uh, you testified that at the time Mr. Bergson had the shotgun, you were tied down. Is that correct? Yes. How long were you tied down to that bed? Very long time. Several hours, wasn't it? Yes. It was uh, dark in the cabin? Yes. Were you face down or on your back? I don't recall. You don't recall? Well, you were raped while you were tied down. Isn't that so? Yes. And isn't it a fact that he didn't take the shotgun down off of the wall until after you were raped? Yes. Uh, I don't know. Well, he didn't use the shotgun to tie you down first. And you were helpless while you were tied down, isn't that correct? Yes. Well, then, it appears there was no need to use a shotgun. Objection. Sustained. Now, Miss Pruitt, you testified in preliminary that you'd been drinking earlier in the evening. Objection. Sustained. Did you have anything to drink in the cabin? No. Mr. Bergson had been drinking all night, hadn't he? Yes, he was. He was drunk, wasn't he? You don't know? No. Isn't it a fact that he took that shotgun down over of that wall and threatened to kill himself because he was sorry for what he'd done? No, he wasn't sorry! He tried to kill me! He's an animal! He beat me! I thought I was going to die. Don't you understand that? Oh. Your Honor. Mr. Underwood. More questions? <gasps>
If both sides rest, the court will recess for 10 minutes. any second. We'll know. All rise. Court is now in session. Please be seated. Call again the case of the people versus Carl Bergson. Both sides are present and represented by counsel. Would the defendant please stand? The court cannot disregard the evidence presented in this hearing. The testimony given by Miss Burroughs was such as to indicate a continuing pattern of violent misbehavior. Consequently, the base term will be fixed at the five-year maximum for rape and that to run consecutively with the four-year term for great bodily injury. Furthermore, I feel the defendant did have the ability to make a judgmental choice. That is the use of a firearm in the commission of a violent act. Therefore, I find 1202 to be applicable in this case. Accordingly, two years will be added to the term previously fixed and the full term of the sentence is set at 11 years. The defendant is remanded to the custody of the sheriff to be turned over to the state inmate reception center. You really did it, come on. what you've done. You did it. He got the maximum. He's gonna go to prison for 11 years. But someday he'll be free. Someday he'll come after us. <laughs> 